This is the case number IT 0368T, the prosecutor versus Nasser Orich. I thank you, Madam uh, Registrar, and good afternoon to you too. Uh, Mr. Orich. Uh, Mr. Orish, good afternoon to you. Uh, I want to make sure that you can follow the proceedings in a language that you can understand. Good afternoon, Your Honours, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, I can follow the proceedings in my native language. Okay, thank you. Uh, for the record, uh, my name is uh, Carmel Adjus, and I am presiding uh, to my uh, Right, I have uh, Judge Hans Henrik uh, Breidensholt from the Kingdom of Denmark. Uh, to my left, I have Judge Professor Albin Eze from uh, Germany. I come now to appearances, appearances for the prosecution. Good afternoon, Your Honors. I'm Patricia Sellers on behalf of the prosecution. With me today are co counsel, Mr. Graham Fidefazio and Mr. Jose Doria. Ms. Donna Henry Freilinken is our case manager. Good afternoon to the defense. I thank you, Madam Sellers, and good afternoon to you too and your team. Appearances for Nasser Orich. Good afternoon, Your Honours. Good afternoon to my colleagues from the prosecution. My name is Vasvia Vidovic. Together with John Jones, I represent the defense of Mr. Orich. We have our legal assistants, Ms. Yasmina Chorich, Ms. Yas uh, Adisa Chekic, and our case manager, Mr. Jeff Roberts. Thank you, Madam Vidovic, and good afternoon to you, too. Are there any preliminary matters you'd like to raise before we uh, proceed uh, with the summary of uh, the judgment? I see none. I thank you. And we are therefore proceeding with the uh, summary. A trial chamber two of the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia is sitting today to deliver its judgment in the trial of Nasser Orich. This case deals with crimes of murder and cruel treatment of prisoners and of wanton destruction of cities, towns or villages alleged to have happened in Srebrenica in 1992 and 1993, for which the accused was indicted way back on 13 March 2003. The accused uh, stood trial for the following charges. First, under count one, he is charged with individual criminal responsibility under seven, Article 7.3 of the Statute of the Tribunal for murder as a violation of the laws or customs of war pursuant to Article 3 of the Statute. Under Count 2, the accused is charged with individual criminal responsibility under Article 7.3 of the Statute for cruel treatment as a violation of the laws or customs of war pursuant to Article 3 of the statute. The prosecution never alleged that these crimes of murder and cruel treatment were committed by the accused, but only accused him pursuant to Article 7.3 of the statute as being responsible for these crimes committed by his subordinates while he was holding a position of superior authority. More specifically, the imputed criminal responsibility of the accused consists in the alleged failure on his part to take necessary and reasonable steps to prevent or to punish the crimes of his subordinates. Second. Under count three, the accused is charged with individual criminal responsibility, again under Article 7.3 of the statute, for wanton destruction of cities, towns or villages not justified by military necessity as a violation of the laws or customs of war pursuant to Article 
3B of the statute of this tribunal in relation to all the attacks that I will be mentioning. Here too, the alleged responsibility is that of a superior for having failed to take the necessary and reasonable measures to prevent these crimes. Finally, under count five, the accused is charged with individual criminal responsibility under Article 7.1 of the statute for wanton destruction of cities, towns or villages not justified by military necessity as a violation of the laws or customs of war pursuant to Article 3b of the statute in relation to some of the attacks. Whereas in count three, the accused is charged with responsibility pursuant to Article 7.3 of the statute for crimes submitted, uh, committed by his subordinates while he was holding a position of superior authority. Here in count five, the charge is brought under Article 7.1 of the statute and alleges that the accused instigated as well as aided and abetted through acts and omissions the commission of these crimes. Initially, the accused was also charged with plunder of public or private property pursuant to Article 7.3 and 7.1 of the statutes. Those were respectively counts 4 and 6 of the indictment. However, in its uh, Rule 98 uh, BIS decision of 8 June 2005, the trial chamber um, unanimously acquitted the accused of these charges upon reaching the conclusion that the prosecution had failed to adduce evidence capable of supporting the conviction of the accused under the same two counts. During the trial proceedings, which commenced on the 6th October 2004 and ended on 10th April uh, 2006, the trial chamber was confronted with a large amount of evidence consisting of testimony and documents. It set 196 uh, trial days during which it heard the viva voce evidence of 50 prosecution witnesses, 29 defense witnesses and one witness uh, called by the trial chamber. In total 625 and 1,024 exhibits were tendered into evidence by the prosecution and by the defense respectively. For the purpose of this hearing, we shall briefly summarize the trial chamber's findings and the underlying reasons for them. We emphasize, however, that this is only a summary and that it does not in any way form part of the judgment of the trial chamber. The only authoritative account of the findings of the trial chamber is in a written judgment which will be available uh, to the parties after this hearing is concluded. The public can equally consult it on the website of uh, the tribunal once this hearing is over. We shall now deal, uh, give you some uh, background of the case. Bosnia and Herzegovina was one of, the, of six constituent republics of the former Yugoslavia. In the early 1990s, tensions increased between the country's different ethnic groups. And by April 1992, when armed conflict broke out in Bosnia and Herzegovina, the Bosnian Serb side heavily relied on the Serb-dominated JNA, the Yugoslav People's Army, and was thus militarily far superior. By contrast, the Bosnian Muslims found themselves insufficiently prepared for the conflict as they had neither the structures nor the logistics to match the might of the Bosnian Serb forces.